with the members of the Millionth Circle about this work I'm doing, and one of them told me what happened recently, which was a perfect example of this millennial a boomer thing. She's a boomer, she's a she's a boomer person, but she's mm -hmm. also this activist who's helped to form Gather the Women in Canada. Well, she's walking, she's taking a morning walk, and uh, she hears a voice saying, hello, and and she looks around, she can't <laughs> see where this person is until she discovers this is a woman up in a tree. Oh! So she uh, <laughs> goes through. That doesn't happen every day. <laughs> no, so she goes up, <laughs> and she's, she, she finds out this woman named Hillary is a young artist, and she has just, she just heard a few, a day or two before that this, this grove of old Gary trees uh. are going to be cut down. Mm. And as soon as she heard, she decided to climb the tree to prevent it from being cut down. Oh, and so and now she's, she's, she's telling my friend Claire uh, that that's what she's doing. Right. And so Claire hears the whole story and then she walks on and, and she thinks to herself about what would make a woman care enough about something to climb up and sit in a tree. And her next thought as a feminist sisterhood Artemis woman was her willingness to support any woman who cares enough about something to sit up in a tree. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, what, the, the, what then happened is that because Claire is in the generation that was connected with the community, then she could get the word out easily mm, about yes. the trees, mm -hmm. about how uh, this is going to happen unless the community gets behind saving the trees. And lo and behold, all kinds of people come forth and lobby the council, city council, and get to the newspapers because that's the generation that's, that knows yeah. how to make things happen yeah. and who the politicians pay attention to. While the young people are the people that can stand up for what needs yeah. to be done and get media attention. Wonderful. Wow. What a In a week, it worked. Wow. They, they, they save the trees and are moving to having a, a uh, bylaw that says you've, you can't just cut down old growth oh, trees. That's beautiful. So that's moving. But again, it's what happens when you really have a passion for yeah. saving something, which is a heart thing. I mean, I, I think that whenever you get involved because mm -hmm. your heart and soul moves you to care about something, whether you do it behind a computer because you're an introverted activist, which I actually tend to be, and I or, love or that about you. <laughs> whether, I love that. We have that in common. <laughs> or whether you go climb we up make a tree. difference on the planet, but can I do it for the comfort of my home and a computer? Yes, right, indeed. Right, and this right, is the age right, you can do right. that, right? Oh my God, I love that. I so love that, and I I so love the collaboration piece because when I saw for transformation of women, like we were talking about before. I've always seen that it's possible to collaborate. I've always looked from what's the greatest win that can happen, not just, you know, kind of like what's the ripple in the pond? What's the, you know, how many ways can it benefit each and every, and those that they don't even know are benefiting? Now, now when you're sitting around wondering what is it to be a woman, mm -hmm. what it is to be feminine, mm -hmm. that's exactly what it is to be feminine. Oh. It's that whole collaborative thing. It's how our brains are, are wired, even. Mm -hmm. it's, it's that we listen to each other's stories. It's that we are called the empathic gender because we have, an, again, it's a hard thing. The empathic gender listens to the stories of other people, and we can imagine how it would be to be in that person's mm -hmm. place. Definitely. If you cannot, sometimes I think patriarchy is a real failure of imagination. Hmm. Because it, or a failure of compassion. Compassion. Because you shut down. Uh, but women as a gender listen to stories. We talk. Uh, when stress comes up, mm -hmm. the research shows what's called the tendon befriend response. Okay, there's, there's anxiety. Um, the, this is at UCLA. The, you know, it's publish or perish. It's if you don't get the right grant, you're gonna, your, your department's going to get, research is going to get shut down. So here's this 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 department that that studies stress and it has men and women in it because of the women's movement there are women researchers all over the place that look at things from the standpoint of wait a minute women are different 
Mm-hmm. They never, ever used to teach us that in medical school because the only research subjects were men. Anyway, things have changed. <laughs> things have changed a few years. Things have changed. Yay. So here's this department down in, in UCLA uh, under stress, and the men are doing what we were all taught happens to human beings under stress, which is called flight or fight. Mm. So they are withdrawing into their cubbies, and you're not seeing much of them in the department. Now, they may be having road rage on the UCLA <laughs> freeways, I bet. Uh, but the average woman knows when her man is stressed because he's likely to come home and say, leave me alone, and go sit in front of the television set. Mm-hmm. And that's the equivalent of flight mm. or irritability, which is sort of fight. Now, the women researchers noticed that they weren't doing that at all. What were they doing? They were cleaning up the lab, and they were making coffee, and they were talking. <laughs> oh, my God. They I'm were... having a lot of flashbacks, and hot flashes, flashbacks. This is really interesting. Yeah, well, they were talking. I've been feminine all my life and didn't know it. Yes, because this is a very feminine style, oh. under stress, to, to talk to your best friend, for example, yeah. which men don't do. Hmm. They don't want to talk about it, you know. Are you? The, he comes home from his stressed out place, and the stereotype is actually usually true. Uh, she knows something is wrong, wants to talk about it. He doesn't want to, to talk about it. Leave me alone. I'm gonna. And and consequently, uh, there's such a difference in what happens. The what they found was that as women talked, the stress went down. Hmm. And the, what's called the maternal bonding hormone level went up. It was, it's, a, it's called the oxytocin response. Yep. So that in sharing stories and stress and, and having ideas about how, you know, we provide ideas for each other. This is why circles are so natural for women. You talk hmm. and you learn from each other. If that woman can do that, I could do something like that too. Or someone will have a suggestion based on experience. and. You incorporate it, and somehow sharing it, the stress goes down, and oxytocin, the bonding hormone, goes up. Mm. And it's called the tend and befriend response. Now, we, and, and it is enhanced by estrogen. The flight or fight reaction is an adrenaline 